Hey everyone. Hey, it's all working, I think. So I'm doing 1080p again, hopefully. So hopefully it comes out okay. Not sure how it's going to go, because right now we're in lockdown again. Came in on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, we locked down again. Because there's a Delta variant turned up. Sneak through from Sydney. These damned Australians. Using a time to backup files for OSX update. What OSX are you going to? I'm stuck on 10.12 because that's what I need for my editing software. Hey Johnny. So you've got Dave, Ian, Adam, Willem, Christian. Fred, excellent. Yeah, so, yeah, so we're in lockdown again. So I've had a few days off work, which has been, in a way, good. I caught up with the projects we mean to do for the past six months. No, Mako, yeah, not yet, anyway. I posted on Twitter saying I'm live, so. Um, he usually sees more Twitter notifications, he follows me on Twitter. If none of you follow me on Twitter, then go to Twitter and follow me on Twitter, because I'm on Twitter. Back in your office on the 30th, first time 18 months, wow. That'd be a bit of a surreal moment then, wouldn't it? Hey Joe. Uh, Adam, I didn't see your reply. Did I miss it? Oh, dual boot, dual boot, and Hovey. And we have the latest version is. Oh, right. What the hell am I on? Sierra, is it? I can't bloody remember. Yeah, Sierra. 10.12. The whole naming thing completely screws me, so I don't remember names. That's just not so I'm good at. Numbers? I remember. Names? Not so much. You're not on Twitter or Facebook? Oh, excellent. <laughs> One of the few people which aren't. The only reason I'm on Twitter really is the, um, as a social media aspect of what I'm doing, really. Um, I don't really talk to people on there that much. I mean, I'll just maybe see notifications from people. Facebook I almost don't use at all. I, I'm on Facebook, but I almost don't use it whatsoever. It's just... <clears throat> I follow a couple of groups on there, electronics groups and things like that, that's about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, Facebook's a, How many likes can you get? And it's full of adverts and spyware and... Yeah. Hey, Sheridan? Yes. Wait, Facebook tries to... I mean, I, there's been times I've... been using my phone. I've got Facebook on the phone. I've been having this conversation with someone and suddenly I'm seeing adverts, like the next day I think it is, I'm seeing adverts for the thing I was talking about with someone, which someone I've never searched for, <laughs> you know, mm, how does it know I was talking about those, was it listening, you know, it's you know, a voice conversation, not a text conversation, hmm, USB interface issues in my hobby, really. What computer are you running? I'm running an old Mac Pro, it's 2010 or something. It's a 4.1, which I upgraded to a 5.1. Basically the same machine, I think. Something like that, anyway. Is that right? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, 4.1 up to a 5.1. It's a firmware update on it, which I did. And, um,. That made it like the later year, year machine and it's maxed out basically as far as CPU goes, I think, or pretty much. 
CS340 and CP. Okay. RK2012 Mega Pro. Yeah, I've got one of those as well. Actually, I've got a few of them. Good little computers. I've fixed them. Ones I've done done videos on them, fixing them. Am I going to work on something nice today? Well, probably. Um, I've got a few ideas. Okay. I'd like to go to a new system, but there's a few things that will break in my case. I mean, I'll, I'll break my editing software. So I'm using Premiere Pro, and I'm using a purchased version of Premiere Pro, not a hired version of Premiere Pro. So if I try and um, update, I'll have to change to the hired version and start paying for it all over again. <coughs> so yes, not the best. Um, Have you actually installed the drivers for the CH340? Because there's a special driver you install to run that thing in order to run it reliably. I mean, I know how to install it on mine. I imagine you've already done that. It's probably a bit obvious. So, projects we can do. Let's see. Now, I found some wire. Now, last week I was talking about this Solotron and wanting to change that socket on the front. But the only problem is I didn't have a wire for the cable. Well, I was in my box yesterday looking for some other wire and I found some wire. So I actually do have some wire which should probably be good enough. It's not like super high precision stuff. It is multi-core and shielded and stuff like that. So I think that's probably good enough. Um, you've not installed a CH340 driver. Ah. cobalt method but yeah randomly drops connection or it just ignores drivers I remember I installed drivers twice on my machine this is going back a couple of years but I've installed them twice um, yeah, so um, CH341 is the one which I put in, but I think it might be the same drive for both chips. Um, yeah. But I just installed it, I've had no problems, but maybe it is just a system glitch, maybe. It could well be. Probably some, some kind of um, security settings thing, you know, the way it's got these higher security levels in there and it's just a bit more fussy about stuff. Uh, the later system versions have. A lot more fussiness going on as far as security. Maybe it's something there glitching. Anyway. Mm. Right, so. Um, Solitron 7075. Like I said, I've got the cable, so now I'm actually really tempted to do the conversion on that. And I'll show you what I've been playing with the past few days. I'll get them. <coughs> So I've got these things, which are projects I made a while ago. It actually runs on a keyboard. Like this. So keyboard interface. It's got a USB cable going in. And I built these over a year ago now. A year and a half ago, something like that. And the problem I have with them is that they have an OLED display. And OLED is great, uses a bit more power than I like, and in full sunlight, because they used to use outdoors, um, they can be hard to see. You have to sort of shade them off the sun and stuff like that. If you've got full sun on it, it makes it really hard to see it. Um, you can see it, but it's not ideal. You have to actually take an effort to see it. So what I've did the past few days, this is what I've been trying to do for the past six months, what well, I mean to do for well, at least six months, maybe longer, is change the display type. So a little while ago I picked up some sharp memory LCD displays. So they're actually reflective display, there's no backlighting or anything on them, it's not illuminated, it's just an LCD display. And on this one here, I don't want to get to see, can I get to see the 
You can kind of see it's reflecting, all right? Very reflective. So, in daylight, the more light there is, the easier it is to see it, which is exactly what I need because they're used for outside. <coughs> they never use the dark, it's always daytime when they use, so it's never night time and that, so it doesn't need to be lit up. I think my cat's barging away in. Yes, she is. Hello, George. And um, so these would be much better for that. But it's taken me a few days to get these things built because I've had to make some different brackets to mount them on the circuit board. And I had to, like, it's different because I use a space between the circuit board and the display to stand off. So it's got, obviously got through whole parts on the back of the board so they all stick out. And um, so I know to allow for that, I need a spacer. So I've got a spacer in now to make a new one to support this display a bit better and get the spacing right because obviously the height's different. And then I also make a new bezel for the front, all 3D printed, of course. So I had to design those and get those built. Um, that wasn't too bad. I had more problems getting it to print than designing it. My printer was giving me all kinds of trouble. I was trying to print Pet G first, and that was okay, but I can't. Oh, I don't know, I think I've thrown it out now. But it came out really thin for some reason, it's just dimensions weren't right. And then I did another pet G and it came off the bed. I cleaned the bed off really well, did another pet G, came off the bed, gave up on that, went to um I tried polycarbonate PC. Thought let's give this a go. I haven't tried it before. And that started off okay and then it came off the bed. <laughs> it's like mm, okay. And it seemed to have quite a hard, quite a hard bow in it. So I think the shrinkage was a big issue on that one. I've never tried polycarbonate before, so I thought I'd just could try it and see how it went. And initially, it looked like it was quite good. And um, but then that failed. I was like, oh, no, okay. So then I went back to PLA and it printed fine. <laughs> PLA is easy. So I did all that, and then um, obviously then I had to do the actual display interface and stuff. So I had to do some prototyping with that. So over here is a ESP32, which I was prototyping with, and I've got an FPC adapter board. Wait, uh, hold on. Nice, cat vomiting. I think I made it. <laughs> Came here to see me and tried to vomit on my carpet. That was a nice interruption. So yes, as I was saying, FPC adapter. I have to clean it up later. <laughs> At least it's on vinyl. Um, so I use that. But um, yeah, I've got a bunch of those little adapters. Poor kitty, yeah. Oh. Yeah, nobody wants a, a cat vomiting on live stream today. It's just the chat chap been waffling on a bit. Uh, okay. CP210X, yeah. OSX, I've had no problems with OSX as far as drivers and reliability of devices goes. I haven't had any problems. Um, just watch out for things like USB loading. If it's got too much loading on the USB, maybe it causes problems. Or if you don't use a hub, don't go through a hub. Because um, that causes problems because the hub is effectively a middleman that causes issues sometimes. So go straight to your computer, don't go through a hub. Um, that helps. Um, Hey Ryan, I'm not in the UK, but I'm English. I'm in New Zealand. Yeah. Anyway, so yes, so the um, so this might obviously my prototyping USB thirty two. I just hooked into that, and if we see adapter, I've actually kept these adapters, and that's what I'm using. So I'm just use these. Um, I've actually used these cables. I've just I've gone straight. I haven't got a header or anything on it. I'm just sold straight on the wires. 
um, and amount of doubt on the back of the screen. So that little data there, let's try and give it a bit of a shot. All right, so that little data there, it's actually dual sided, but one side doesn't have a connector on it. Come on, focus. God, I hate these cameras. Look good, but that focus. Anyway, um, so you can buy these datas on AliExpress. I did show them a mailbag one time when I arrived. So one side's got a 0.5mm 10 pin FPC, and the other side's got a 1mm 10 pin FPC. Um, so obviously, she's the same board for two different pitches, and this needs 0.5mm pitch. So, if I were to redesign the circuit board for the project, I'd design in the FPC adapter on the board and try and make it the reach. The problem is the flex on display is only about that long, so there's actually not a lot of room to get the flex to the circuit board and get the spacings and everything right as well. So, that's a bit tricky. Not impossible, but tricky. It could be done, but I don't want to pull the flex too hard and that sort of stuff. So I would have done is I'd stubble side to take that on the back of the display. And it works. So the prototype's working. It's up and going. I should show you it, shouldn't I? Turn it on. But I'm not sure how well it's gonna show up. Um, oh. So you can see it there, but if I get it reflecting you know, trying to sort of see past it at the same time as showing you. Over here, come on. Well, you can see it shows up quite well. And the OLED is obviously it lights up, so you can see it quite well when it's got dim lighting. Like indoors, it's really good, or if it's under dark lighting conditions or undercover, it's really good. Um, but the resolution is not as good as well. It's only uh, 320 by 240, I think it is, something like that. Might be less than that actually at display. Um, Trying what it is. One twenty-eight by. What kind? But anyway, two forty-one one twenty-eight could be that. Anyway, these are much higher resolution, so you have got much nicer fonts and everything as well. So yes, I've been doing that for the past few days, getting that all working. Yeah, well. Dog vomits, mm, not good either. <laughs> yeah. So, shielding. This is a. It's part of a live result system I use for events. So, that is a queuing system. So the event. Each entry has got an event number, and they put that in when they queue up. And it um, it puts it onto the web server. And there's another box which is very similar, without a keyboard, which is, does all the scoring. So cats are evil, dogs are not. Well, that's probably true actually. <laughs> cats are certainly more fickle. Anyway, oh, everyone's against, everyone's against cats. Oh dear. I thought some of you guys hanging out with, uh, with Paul Daniels as well. Come on. Anti cat people, it's no good. So, waffling on about this stuff enough. So, that's what I've been working on the past few days. I've just got it working last night and got the first prototype built, which is just that one. I mean, I've been using these systems for a while, you know, a couple of years. I've kind of, yeah, almost two years ago I started building it. So,. I just I wasn't happy with the displays because I sell I was always seeing people struggling to read the displays when it's in full sun, so I wanted to change that and I found these sharp OLED displays, not sharp OLED, sharp memory displays which are two point seven inches, original display is two point four inches, so slightly bigger, and um, I can actually fit a bit more on the screen as well, which is quite good because actually full height before the original OLED was slightly shorter, so I've actually got another line on the screen. That's more like a Christian, that's the one. Cats for lazy people. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. I'm a lazy person. 
Um, yes, anyway. So, that's been quite time consuming. There's a few things I needed to do, such as tomorrow is Monday, obviously, what well, is for me anyway. And I haven't even edited the video yet for tomorrow's video, which will be released in 15 hours time. So, yeah, I haven't edited it yet, so I need to do that once I finish the live stream, I need to go and edit that video so I can get the thing released tonight. Hey, Potter. Yeah, so, hmm. Um, right, so we need to do something. So I got the Sonatron 7075. Also got something I want to show you. Um, I've had it sitting here for a while. I picked it up a few years ago. Never used it. I thought, let's power it up and have a little look at it. Now, I think I powered up originally just to make sure it worked, and that was about it. I didn't, it's been sitting on a shelf ever since. I didn't actually use it. But it's one of the things I picked up thinking, eh, it could be handy. And, um, yeah, we'll see. In fact, let's go to it now. And we want... Let's do that one. And we get some more lighting going over there. Pretty old thing. Does it actually have a date on it? Well, not on the outside of the box anyway, as I can see. So it's a little handheld oscilloscope. Or Billiman. I've had this thing sitting on a shelf for ages. I think I didn't pay that much for it. I think I paid. I got it locally. Um, what did I pay for it? I think I paid about $80 for it, something like New Zealand, which is, you know, sort of about 60 bucks US and like, roundabouts. Single channel. Takes batteries, which has a screw for. We'll power it up, so it will still work. Non-captive screw. That's always dodgy. Takes five AA batteries. I don't have a power adapter for it unfortunately, so I'm going to have to put batteries in. How power does it take anyway? Set a positive 9 volt. I will have one, but not in this room.
you know, really put the screw back in again. Well, we have a display. It is actually working. Did we even turn it on? It's not on our port. Hmm. Okay. I was trying to find power switch because, you know, oh, there it is there. That one. Okay. Ooh, flashy. Well, this thing does seem to be doing something. Let's get a bit of shot of the camera. My interview was interesting. Oh, is that one with um, Simple Electronics? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where it went actually. It just it didn't feel like I got into much substance on that thing. Been okay though, I suppose. change to this one so it's going to work it's not going to work <laughs> is that plugged in there yes i do right let me just change the camera hold on why is that not capturing there we go For some reason it wasn't refreshing properly right Yeah. Yeah. Let's get some more lighting I want. Always need more light. Of course, and this is reflecting off the screen. So that's interesting, all the voice. Yeah, I'll turn it off again. Fifteen minute auto power off to save your batteries. It's only rated at ten megahertz. Let's plug this probe into something and actually test it. There's a data here. I think I do. Does it fit this one? It seems to. Maybe. Just about. Times ten. <coughs> Let's turn modulation off. Don't want that. Carry frequency. Let's do one megahertz. Wave level 0.5 volt because that should be measurable. There you go. My megahertz. It's been a bit noisy though, isn't it? I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to get this in the right place so you can both see it. So that's as slow as it will go. Or the fastest time base. Let's go to 10 megahertz. Just 
seems to have lost it. Hmm. It's about to be 10 megahertz, so I can't see it. Trigger. What if I crashed it? Oh no. <laughs> let's, let's reboot it. No, nothing there. Okay. 5 megahertz. No, nope. it's one megahertz again. One megahertz is there. Two. Three. Yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. Look, it's dropping off. Three is already dropping off. So it says ten megahertz, but it ain't doing ten megahertz. I do have a set of times ten. So this times one. This times ten. Yeah. Hmm. Schedule claims in. <laughs> Two megahertz. I mean, even one megahertz is looking a bit wobbly on there, isn't it? Like five megahertz. Point two megahertz. Yeah, this is looking better for low frequency stuff. Point one megahertz. Point oh one, so ten kilohertz. Uh, as slow as I can go on this thing, I'm going to load 10 kilohertz. But, uh, anyway, it does seem least to work, but above I don't know, 1 megahertz is basically useless. Which is interesting because I'm sure it's rated it more than that. Hmm. At the 10 megahertz sampling rate. Sampling rate, not bandwidth. Here we go. Up to 2 megahertz analog bandwidth. Lovely marketing ploys there, isn't it? So the rate at 2 megahertz, that makes a bit more sense. It's a nice marketing trick, wasn't it? Stick 10 megahertz on the front, it's actually 2 megahertz. <laughs> But if you're doing audio stuff, it'd be absolutely fine. Or maybe power supplies, stuff like that. If you're looking at power supplies, you know, you want something which is isolated, which is why I got this thinking it'd be nice have a nice isolated floating supply, you know, so you can actually do probing around and stuff and not worry about potentially shorting out the ground line or, sort of, or a voltage line of the ground probe, that kind of thing. And then it's sitting on a shelf for a few years, unused. <laughs> Uh, I should dismantle this and put it back together, shouldn't I? In fact, before I do that, I'll read the chat in case you want me to play with something. Ah, dear. Let's catch up this. Uh... A nice cool beer after a hard day in the workshop, aren't you? My coffee's going cold, I must be talking too much. Cool, you guys chatting myself, that's happy, that's good. Yeah, so it's an interesting little device. I mean, I picked it up thinking I could use it for doing isolated measurements, you know. Because right now everything I've got is ground referenced. Now, obviously, you can work around that. You can. I do actually have a um, isolation transformer. I do have one. It's underneath my desk. It's not connected to anything. It's just sitting underneath my desk. For the one time I do need to use it. So I've got it there, but um, yeah, I, my entire house and every circuit is run on fast CDs. So for protection, at least I've got that part. Um, 
Yeah, so... Yeah, put it away again, like... We'll start playing the Subtron. You're drinking... Oh, drinking coffee is too early for beers here. Yeah, so those little um, displays I was talking about before, those sharp memory displays, I'll show you them actually, I'll put a dial sheet up, or something up, or something. Yeah, let's find it. In recent, it's the Debrosia. Now, Adafruit sell a version of these displays and a breakout ball to really use. It's about 70 bucks US. I believe these displays are about 20 bucks US each from DigiKey or something like that. I picked these up from a guy on Twitter, doesn't sound dodgy at all. But he had a whole bunch of them and um, I picked up 10 I think. I think I picked up 10, might have been 12, I can't remember. Um, one of them had a bad flex, so I actually had a broken flex on it. So let's go to... This one. So one of them had a torn flex, so I expected it to notice. I didn't really notice straight away either, so it wouldn't really surprise me. Anyway, that's the one which is running in that unit now. I actually repaired the flex on it. I thought it'd be a good thing to do. So the current demo sizes is a slideshow presentation. Feels like it would work. Anyway. So 0 0.96 inch up to 4.4 inch for these displays. So I'm using a 2.7, which is this one here. So it's 400 by 240 resolution. And it's 5 volt and 3 volt. You need two supplies. So I'm actually, I think you can get away with using just a single supply rail, but they recommend just using a 3 volt rail as well. So it's got so digital and analog input. So I'll pull the dial sheet up and I'll show you that. Um, recent now oh, there. Okay, just want to fit it on screen. It's basically using an SPI interface. There's the pinouts. There you go, you can just see it there. So there's the flex, rep flex, flex representation. And this is the pinout. So we've got two power supplies, your digital and analog power supply. They are both five volts. Why they're isolated, I'm not quite sure what the story is there. I haven't actually read the whole data sheet on the right, so it could be explained in there, I don't know. So the 5 volts is going to the analog and digital power supplies and 0 volts to these two. Right, so that's four of the connections already taken care of. Then we have um, SPI based communication which is clock, serial, data in and chip select. So that's those three pins. Chip select cannot just be tied to a level. It has to be switching. Otherwise it doesn't work. I tried that. I was trying to reduce the pin count and just tying it high which is its activation. Um, didn't work. I then tried trying it low, it didn't work either. It has to be tripping with um, the signals, so with the serial data. So that needs all three connections. You've got this external comment version signal input. Don't know what that is, haven't used it. Um, display on and off, that's your high to turn it on. But the serial and communication lines are 3 volts, not 5 volts. So all this is 3 volt based. Right, so they do say you can use it up to the VDD voltage, but they recommend 3 volt levels, so that's what I'm doing. I'm using SP32 anyway, so the serial data is all 3 volt based, and I'm using a 5 volt to 3 volt adapter anyway, with sort of main 5 volt rail on that unit, so I'm just using that 5 volt rail for this data uh, for the power supplies. And um, yeah. And then we've got this external mode that also has to be pulled low. So these three pins are low. Now on my 
or on the unit that I used, which had the torn flex, it was actually torn across three, three lines. So what I did is I scraped the flex coating off and just bridged those three lines together, then bridged it back across the other side. So it was a nice, easy repair. You don't have to like little hair thick wires. I just lumped them all, stick it with bubble solder on it, and fine, it works because all three of those had to be low anyway. So that's fine. So not many connections really, it's six wires. It does go through into the serial information. Adafruit have a library for it, which is why I was fairly keen to look at this because there's a library, which I mean, easy to implement it. But it does actually explain it all in here anyway, all the coding and timing lines and the waveforms for the various serial communications and stuff like that. So it does mention stuff in there and it goes through quite a bit. You know, there's a data stream there, how to format the stream. So. Yeah, so that's what's running now. So I'm quite pleased about that. Anyway, we'll go back to this, put this thing away. And almost as good. Let's take the battery back here. I do better. Well, things I'm almost not going to use. Um, I'll generally take the batteries back out if I can. If I can get the things back out. Ram six to refuse. Refuse. Rescue. Should never leave batteries and stuff. If you've got drawer batteries, don't even put them in. Just throw them straight in the bin now. Say that the whole leakage thing. <laughs> yes, anyway. So I'll get the solder run out and I'll play with that. As soon as I've found some cable, which I think is right. Got a quick look at it. So we've got four cores. Four cores and a shield. On this cable, so whether it's any good as far as voltage and isolation goes, don't know, don't care. I just want a cable. <laughs> I could always do it again later on if, it, if I find it doesn't work very well. This has been sitting on top of a shelf for, say, about three years. I really should have, sort of had it a bit more handy than that. There's been times when I probably should have used it, and I thought, oh, no, it's a bit effort to get it out and mess around, getting it set up. So, and I have made do instead, which is, you know, not really the reason I got this thing. I got it to use it at one point or other. I'm pretty sure they've got a whole bunch of batteries staying over there. We'll see. Okay. Let's try and not get tangled up. It's going to get crowded around here. Cake was looking for you today. That's annoying. <laughs> All right. Let's do it this way. So that's the kitty you want to replace. Hopefully, with not that one. That one. Yeah, we've got some washers on. Thinking I might need them. Uh, 
Right. Running out of screen. Hey, cool. How's it going? Single channel scope for Maplins. Okay. Is that like one of these little handheld ones like I just showed? Right. Let's get on to this thing. It's a project I've been meaning to do for months. Another one. But of course, the lockdown, I've got a bit more free time because I've got probably at least another week off, I expect. Um, yeah. So I can catch up with these little projects and things we mean to get around to doing. Now we get this thing open. All right, screws the back. What I was thinking about doing last night was actually re-watching Ian's repair of this thing. Well, his modification of one, because he did one. He's already done this on his unit. I was thinking I should go and re-watch that just to refresh my memory about what I saw to help guide me when I do this one. Anyway, I didn't do it. So, yeah, we'll see how we go. <laughs> Don't drop any bits down little awkward little holes. Don't be taking circuit boards out to retrieve things. Come on. Pretty sure that was it. off. There we go. Did I take it off? Just have to loosen them. Cool. You've got more screws here. We'll get this bit out. Ian's probably there going, no, don't do that. What's going on here? Why can't this be left out? I don't want it wants to come out. What's going on there? I think it's just wedged. I can't see it attached, really. Okay. I oh, know. I'm an idiot. It's the screws that are holding these on. Okay, we'll take the handles right off then.
Progress. Kind of. I'll take the bottom part off as well. Get this bottom piece out. Yep, I will. Do the bottom as well. So I've already fully refurbished this thing. I think there's only one capacitor that I know about that I have not replaced. And that's a big bolt cap that's in the back there. Because I checked rip on lines, that sort of stuff, and it all seemed fine. That's quite a massive cap, and I thought, well, okay, it cost a bit of money to replace that one. And um, I thought, well, I'll just wait. <laughs> It seems fine, so it doesn't really need to be replaced. But all the other ones I've done, re recapped all the power supply and that sort of stuff. There's a the videos on it already. Showed all that before. Right, we're in. I don't think I'll take this bottom one off. It's got these springs in here. Earthing. Interesting. It's a nice touch. This way so there we go. So here's an adjustment for adjusting the microvolt offset. That's the we've got to try and get apart and get out. I believe I can lift the displays or some of these boards out. Maybe. Or just maybe move it back. Just do that with it. So that's what I need to get to is just here. Chat out. That's why you can see it's scrolling probably. You're not saying anything because you can't remember. Yeah, fair enough. Um. Oh, I had to go catch that around. We're still here. Hi, Kimmy. Okay, KB. I don't know how you want me to say it. Notification not working. Yeah, that's typical. So we zoom into this. So what I need to do is make notes about the actual pinout. So I can get that right. 
Well, I did make some notes about potential stuff. Oh, is that it there? There we go. This is what I saw from Alan, Alan's, Ian's video. Uh, yellow, bottom left, yep. Blue, yep. Red at the top, yep. Um, that's as far as I could see. So we've got... These are Teflon wires. Um, black in the middle, green at the bottom. So black. And green. Yep, so that one over where the wires go. And I'll replicate that in the new plug. I assume we can get that far. So this looks like it's got a space or something in it. Oh, look at that, it's loose. <laughs> it's actually moving around. So I've got to get this out, get those wires off without causing any damage. Let's change camera views again, shall we? Should we do this one? No, that one. Hmm. Nah. Probably should have been recording this for a video, shouldn't I? I probably should have been. Oh well, never mind. Do that now. I've already started. Just watch your step when you go out on stand by that mat. Because George is trying to brush out around, she's picked up on the mat. Nice. Mm. Managed to avoid getting on the carpet, which is a good thing. <laughs> oh, so it's just on the vinyl? Yeah. Okay. She came in here to throw up, apparently. Nice. On my feet. On your feet. <laughs> that's, that's a fiction, right? Yeah. Or is that a dead mouse? What are you doing? Uh, Rick in the place. I am sorry. <laughs> All right. So we've got these sleeves. You've got to slide off. Thankfully, they're not heat shrunk, so I can slide them back. That's looking pretty straightforward. Let's get a 
some crappy tweezers. Yep. So those sleeves back. So what I'm hoping is that I can get this new connector and fit it through exactly the same hole and do exactly the same thing with it. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Now I've got it apart, I may see a different story. So I've made some, well I've got some washers here to put on it. Put those on there thinking I'm, I'm going to have issues with the sizing because this is obviously a bigger hole because it's a bigger connector. And I thought the hole was probably as big as the actual connector itself on here. So, yes. <laughs> it's going to be a bit friendly soldering up, but we'll get there. So, this is a standard, like, consistent five pin output. So, it's just a symmetrical socket. Because, obviously, the original one is not. Well, the original one goes that way, up. It's that way around normally. So, it's a weird offset configuration. Anyway. We'll get these wires off here. These tips are a bit massive for this. Let's change. Let's put a fresh solder on these to get these off. Let's see. I wonder if I'm going to regret changing this tip now. Because <laughs> of thermal mass. I'll set a 300, which should be plenty. I might have to get higher, because of the thermal mass. Come on, this one's being more stubborn. Let's flip over. I just can't see what I'm doing right now because I'm blocking it with my hands because that's always good, isn't it? Let's try a different approach. So that's a spacer. I don't know if I've got enough length on these threads to be able to do the same spacer on here. I doubt it. Yeah, threads are definitely shorter, so I don't think I've got enough length on there for that. I'll try it. Yeah, no, it's going to be too short. Yeah, 
but it looks like it might fall through the hole. That's a good thing. But it won't be keyed in, it's the only downside there. So, it's going to be like that, so I want the dot on the top, these washers aren't ideal, but you know, they work. So what I think I might do is plug the connector in, if I've got something to hold on to. I can tighten that nut up. Okay. Right. Spanner. I'm probably miles off. Might be fourteen. Excellent. So it will really bug me if I do this and I don't get it to be exactly vertical. So trying to get this to be exactly vertical in itself is going to be interesting. Just trying to kind of eye it up, you know. Put that back in place. Mind you, I'm not going to be keeping this in. The reason I'm changing the socket is because I want to sell it. So, I'll be bugging the next person. <laughs> I think with this way, it's just still tighter than it was before I started putting it apart. It was wobbling around before, so let's try and spin the whole thing. I've gone round too far. Pretty close. Yeah. So the dot on the sleeve on this, we've got to play in it. That's alright. Done. Now, let's um, put these wires back on and try and get in the right places. So, what I think I'll do actually is Put some solder on those before I start, and I'll just feed the wires in afterwards. I think that'll work out slightly better. Just find out getting those molten the wires above it. Don't touch those if you like. Okay. Here's one of the sleeves. I need to put it back on, whichever one's fallen off. 
green. It's a black one. Black wire. Right. Jay Jay again, and I'll carry on. Hey, Andrew. Yeah, I, don't, I do need some more washers and stuff on there. Um, it is going to be recessed. Um, but that's what I've got. That's, that's what I've, all I actually have on hand. So, yeah. The nut is not actually too bad. I mean, I could, I could probably squeeze another... Probably four mil on there. But I don't have anything suitable. Um, I'll put it together. If it doesn't work, then I'll take it apart again and do it again. But I'm pretty sure that will be okay. I mean, yes, it is recessed now, but it won't be quite the same. Yes, I could 3D print one. That's a good point. What are you and your sensible ideas? <laughs> hmm. Let me check the fragment. I'll see how it looks with the front panel on first. Before I do the wiring, how's that? And if it's acceptable, I'll leave it alone. So let's stick a screw on here to hold it together. Oh. Camera shut off. I'll just mount this back up again where it goes and I'll stick the front panel back on and see how it looks. But personally, I'm not too worried about being recessed. And it sits like that. And if I shove this in. You still get to the collar okay, I mean that's going to be sitting there somewhere. It's alright. It's okay, it's not perfect. Hmm. I mean that space of this is too big for it. It's a shame. It's definitely too thick. But I can't use the original one, which would be nice. Three D printing a spacer. Damn it! You're right, Ian. I should three D print a spacer. Uh, let's put this back on. I'll take it off. I need to get dimensions. Damn it, Ian. <laughs> At least it won't take very long. Okay. So, that means I don't need a washer on the outside and put a spacer, which is the right dimension inside outside. So, I won't need to add a washer. Inner wash will still be needed. Let's see how far I can get this down. It's a bit awkward. Kind of doing it the wrong way around. So if I go, yeah, we'll go from there. Right. Sets the six mil recess to the face of the washer. I don't have that much thread on there. I only have. Got to eye this up, can't reach it. Let me go to this. That much. Say three mil if I left for thread being inside the nut slightly. Pushing it slightly, I think. Maybe two mil. It's not much. Two and a half mil, quite two and a half mil. Um 
that's the thickness of that washer, which is not perfect. So we go there. Okay, it's about one half mil. So we call it four mil. To make a four mil spacer. That will bring it out a little bit. And I can also make it the size of the hole, so it makes it nicely centered and fills in that hole a bit nicer. It's 19.3 mil, so I'll do a 19 mil spacer. Right, you got those measurements? 19 mil, 19 mil, four mil deep. Inner hole has to be. Can't measure it. So 19 outside, four mil deep. Or should I recess the whole thing into it? I could do that. I might make it a little bit nicer then. Yeah, okay. Here's a plan. So, there to there, four mil. Making notes. So, a space of this kind of shape. Side view, obviously. All right. So four mil from the face of that to this. Outside there to there is nineteen point got nineteen point one. Um, and the inside cross of those threads, the biggest point. Try and get it like that if I can. Ten point three. 10.5 mil. Sounds like a plan. Something like that. Yeah, let's do that. Um, four mils there. How much do I need to go to the very front? I should have measured that. Four mil depth as standoff. I need to measure. That distance to the front panel, so let's try and figure that out. So I know how much to bring the flange out by. Sitting down all the way. It'll be an estimated depth, I suppose. So, if I ignore that, so it's six mil to the front of that, and I expect one half mil, so I say it's yeah, say seven mil. So, eight and a half mil to the front panel. There to front. Um, so that gives me there to there. Five millimeters. Okay. So I want a total height of eight and a half mil. Four mil on that step in there. So that gives me a four mil step in around that connector so it means I also need to do a larger cutout for the head of the connector for the face here of it which is 14 mil so there to there I need plus tolerances always at our tolerances let's go 14.3 14.4 sounds like a good number all right, do that. <sighs> Trying to watch it via the Sky Q app. Sky Q app, never even heard of it. 
Right, let's get my um, account set up on here. We'll get this loaded up and we'll jump in a Tinkercad and design a piece up. I'll just use Tinkercad, that's all I've ever used. It's free, so, you know, it's great. Hold on my neck trying to do this, but we'll see. Here we go. Right, so we want a cinder. Hey, we want it to be uh, 19.1 to give us clearances. You want a total height of uh, 8.5. That's that part. Next, we want a hole of oh, want a hole of uh, fourteen, no, ten point five. Height doesn't matter. Get rid of that. I need that. Minus one, zero. Right. So we need nineteen point one minus that divided by two. Got that? Get the centering right. So nineteen point one minus ten point five equals eight point six divided by two is four point three. Yeah, that's centered. Now that's the bore hole which the whole thing goes through. Let's move those, done in that. Then one another one for the recessed outlet part for the face here, the flange sort of what we're looking for. So that's fourteen point four. Fourteen point four. It doesn't matter. We do want it standing up by four mil. So now you want nineteen point one minus fourteen point four. That's right, isn't it? Yep. And divide that by two gives us two point three five. Oh, wrong one. What doing that for? In positions. These ones here, what? 2.35. 2.35. Centered. Bang. Where's that? Oh, that's not lovely. Other one. We're going out you here. Right, there we go. Here's our adapter piece. Oh, I don't know, Ian. <laughs> Get him to do it properly. Right, quick as easy as that. Now I need to print this thing obviously, so let's export that. STL file. Okay, I shall save this as um, Sorotron 7075 uh, input jack, input socket, adapter. If I expel it down to right. Uh, 
make sure it's all saved okay I should have actually renamed it before I exported it I'll do that again I'll export it again just easier okay now I'll export it right is that done Get the printer turned on actually. Like that. Hopefully, the printer warming up a bit quicker. Put a PLA on there. I don't know if that's going to be strong enough. Mm. That's not material I tried yesterday. I tried using ABS. ABS was going kind of okay. But fell off the bed again as well. It was a bad adhesion, so it was a pain. Prepare, preheat. Okay. Got quite a few designs in this folder now. You can't see what I'm doing right now. I'll get there. Get Cura open. I'll stick that up there. Locking notch. Damn it. Thank you, Fred. Um. Yeah, I should do that. I should put a flat in there, shouldn't I, for locking? Yeah, I should do. Good point. Let's take this back off. Won't be hard to add it. So we'll get it back off again. <laughs> okay, flats are flat on only on one side. Oh, interesting. I measured 10.5 mil before, now I'm getting a different measurement. I might have to go and visit this anyway. That's okay. Right, back to there. Rushing too much. I measured that as 10.5. I did. I must have been dropping in the threads, okay, or something. So it's 11.8 inside the bore. Turn it back up there. We'll do this again. It's not much though. Easy to fix. So the bore. Let's just go. Bore. Is that one there? Grab another one? No, that one. Come on, let go of it. That one there. That's not 10.5. That is. E call it 12. We'll call it 12. Give us some tolerance. 12. Which means I need to recenter it. Um. 19.1 minus 12. Let's get the calculator out. I'll do it in my head. 19.1 minus 12. Oh, no, it's not right. 19.1 minus 12 divided by 2. 3.55. 
considered. So we need to put a flat on on the top side, yes, on the top. That doesn't matter which side it is actually, just long as it's got a flat, which is 11 millimeters. Right. This is the trickier bit. So what I could do is let's make this a lot smaller for a start. Uh, is that what I said the height was? Eight point five, yeah. Depth the five mil probably be enough. Maybe it might be actually. Maybe I need to be more than that. So that one there is four point sorry, two point three five, is that right? No, is that the one again? It is. That one there. 3.55, remember that number, 3.55. I could use that, but that is a half circle, and it's not enough. It's, it's only got to just have a very slightly flat off one side. So it's not quite the same. So I've got to just take a one millimeter slice off the side of it. All right. So 3.55. So, if I set that at 4.55, just so I can see what I'm doing, I'll put it back into the place afterwards, obviously. 355. If I go 3... If I do 4.355, there we go. Down, I won't forget it. Okay. So if that's 2 mil thick, I've got to take 1 millimeter off the side. Four two five five. Okay, so if I shove that in there, merge those together. Oh, is that gonna? That's gonna take a hole out of that, isn't it? It's gonna the other way around. I have to split them over, move them over together. So, uh, okay. So it's in the right plane. So that is three five five. What's that back? So this needs to be two five five. Like that. Now, what's that going to do? Is it going to take a slice out of the block, or is it going to leave the block in place? It's going to take a slice out of the block. Okay, it's not a one. Undo. Make sure the height's wrong anyway. So that block there, I'll put in afterwards. Two five five. Don't forget. I need to reduce that height anyway, it's not the right height. That needs to be um, 4 mil. So merge those. Go back to 255. That gives us the flat in there. Merge that. There we go, done. Okay. Let's explore that again. Right. Yeah. Right. I'll exit this. I always like to exit it nicely. Okay. Make sure it saves it.
Cura open. Get this on to Cura. Here's Cura. Here's the part. I'm going to move it closer to this side of the bed. I would like to print over here more if I can. Just like to. Let's change the material. I'm not going to be using PG. Um, yes. Let's use that one. Okay, slice it. Seven minutes. That sounds like a good plan. It won't take seven minutes. It will take longer than seven minutes. So, let's get the right folder. Okay, let's go print this thing. It'll probably take 10 minutes. That's what I expect anyway. Unfortunately, I don't have a 3D printer cam. behind the pile over here. Always like to watch it start. It's actually looking pretty good to start with. I don't think I need to adjust them though. Oh no, it's pulling off the bed. Because <laughs> why would it stay working properly? This could be fun. It does a skirt. And that skirt's lifted off. Like so. So, yes, I'll just stick some glue down. Just help it a little bit. I don't like this bed on this printer that much. It's um, it's a glass bed. It's an Inter 3 v 2 It comes with a glass bed. And the bed itself is okay, I suppose. But I do have problems with certain materials sticking to it. PLA has been pretty good, but once you get some like PETG on there, I think it leaves like a greasy film or something, or wax on it. And it just doesn't like to behave after that. So I just want to drop this down a bit. Give it a bit more squish on the bed. And see how that goes.
Hopefully the glue drying time. I thought it was slipping before. I think I basically did in the nozzle against the bed. Well, it's pretty, Zanny. I'll come over again in a second. I just want to make sure it's going all right. Once it gets a couple of layers up, I'll be all right. See you guys. Uh, fun, fun, fun. 3D printing is always great. Check, check. Which I can't currently see because my windows. Um, my oh, my stream is dropping really badly. I'll back it down a bit. We'll see how it goes. Dropping loads of frames. Windoline. I haven't tried Windoline. I've tried IPA. IPA doesn't seem to help. In fact, I think IPA makes it slightly worse. Yeah, this is really bad. I think it's probably trying to stream at uh, 1080p. It was doing okay. Okay, well, I'll back it down some more. Hopefully. Anyway, so let's check it again, make sure it's not falling off. Yeah, it looks alright. Let's go. So this is actually the reason I got a 3D printer. So when I wanted to do things like this, I could do it. So look. So you know, if I needed to make a part, then I could make one fairly easily. This is why I wanted a 3D printer. And that's my main use for them. I don't like really do much else with them apart from make parts for bits of test gear and things like that, or little projects I'm working on. Like I've been doing those things I showed before, the displays, how to make new pieces for those, the bezels and stuff, so. But um, the appeal has usually been pretty good for me, as far as sticking to the bed. It's been all right, but um, sometimes I do have to use glue, which is what I have to do just then, because I think, like I said, when I do pet G, I think it leaves a bit of a wax behind, because plastics have wax in them as part of the lubricants they have built into them, like external lubricants and internal lubricants, they have those in there to help fuse and, and things like that. Um, and waxes are in there and the waxes can actually leave deposits behind. I think once that's on there it's a bit hard to get off. The oxygen front switches, been there done that. All our switches are already done. I would have cleaned those up originally when I first got it. That's all been serviced. It's just this socket I wanted to change because I wanted to keep the cable. So, um, yeah, hopefully the design works. <laughs> Hope it fits. But, uh, yeah. So, we better get this thing apart again. How does it come apart? I've forgotten. Oh. I forgot how it's come to part. I think it just pushes out. Yeah, it does, just pushes out. Okay. Think about that when I did it wires. 
something like that. Anyway, we'll figure it out. But yeah, there's nice little plugs and connectors, like the miniature version of the originals. Um, they weren't that expensive. I think it's like 30 bucks for a pair, something like that. Compared to the originals, which are, you know, you're paying 150 bucks for them. Just for, a connect, just for one side. So, price-wise, these are good. These are from AliExpress as well, but quality seems excellent. They look like they're really nice. So, I've done an installation which is a test across the terminals. I've already done that to prove there's no leakage. Well, nothing measurable, at least, on my side. I couldn't measure any leakage between the terminals using installation testers. There's no arcing across at um, 1,000 volts, so it should be up to the job. Minutes remaining, zero power lane. That's pretty quick. 95% done. Just about there. So we find out if I've got it right or not. Ninety-eight percent. Ninety-nine, and it's all we'll moving away. We're done. Next question is can I get it off the bed? Does that fit in a hole? It does fit in a hole. That's a good start. Come on, come off the bed. This is always a challenging bit, getting it back off the bed. There we go. Sometimes the glue actually helps because it creates a barrier. Right. Close. Looks like my tolerances weren't quite enough. Might need some tweaking. So I allowed a bit of gap. Looks like I didn't quite allow enough for squish. I turn it all out like 0.1 aside, 0.1 mil aside. Sometimes it's not enough. Also, my accuracy, my tolerances aren't good enough on my printer setup. I haven't got that bit tuned in yet. Probably over extruding slightly. So, it's close. I should just get in here give a trim of the scalpel or something. That would work, I reckon. It's just very slightly off. Let's give that a trim. Bump on the side here. This is where it's done the join on the bloody printing. All right. So that that end goes in. That's fine. It's not passing through into this side, so that is not quite looking right. So I just need to trim around the inside here slightly. Make it a little bit bigger. next to me. So even though I measured it, it's not quite right. I did make it 12mm too, which is 0.1 each side. It wasn't enough. Let's see. You only need to probably point my five each side, maybe. Maybe. Let's 
get scared of all this blood, don't we? Good in this thing. I know you can't see what I'm doing, I'm trying to keep the mess away from my main bench here. And I can't exactly drill it because I've got a flat on the side. So, yeah. It's fine. Get a tuning. If I was doing more than one of these, then I'd be worrying about adjusting the model. But, you know. It's just one. I'm not going to be doing a bunch of these. Not worth adjusting the model for that. Okay, I think that'll go now. Clean the garbage out of it. Yeah, there we go. There it goes through. slightly better. I'll take this lamp off the side. It is weird the way printing, like I think it's a cure that does it, I'm pretty sure it's a cure that does this, but it does this join on the side where it always starts and finishes the actual g-code at the same point and it uh, ends up being a lump. You can do a setting in the in the cure there to offset it, so it's all in different place. But it's, um, you still get them. Just and it ends up being everywhere. I'd rather put it in one spot and then trim it off. Just easier. All right. So there's that spacer. Now the question is, do I still need to put a washer behind it in order to um, oh. No, I should have done it, she's put a, a protrusion through the other side so it locked into here. So it keyed into that side as well, never mind. I've got a key into the collar, it gives it something to hold on to at least. See so yeah, what I was thinking about is if I need to put a protrusion through to um, that's what I was talking about. I want to simply put a washer on this side to help reinforce this side of it. So, you know, I did plan to not have one. Sleeves falling off again. Put it back on. It's going to be a pain if it keeps on falling off. I end up losing it. Anyway, stick that back on. I think it's still nicer than it was originally, so yes, you know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 3D printer piece. The only question is can the PLA take the stress without cracking of the connector being in without any reinforcement behind it? Don't know. Even just tightening up might be a problem. That's not breaking yet. <laughs> Maybe I won't try and relax too much. Right, let's put that in place and check the fit. I'm going to turn that printer back off again. Yes, I'm sure I'm finished with it. Unless, of course, it breaks. Yeah, let's sit down there. Wheel around. Here we go. Look at that. You can get it in focus. So that's actually all right. That looks quite nice. Oh, 
it's lining up, so I'm happy with that. So you can put two stepper motors on the Y axis. Interesting. So you've got a metal feeder. Yep. Okay. The question is, can it tolerate you putting a plug in it breaking off? Yep. Cool. Now it's got to do electrical stuff. It was a shame that that join part was on the edge there, right on the top side. That's kind of annoying. I'll show it to me in a second. So, that rough spot there is where that lump is, which I've trimmed off, and it's you know quite visible on the top, which is a bit of a shame. Oh well. Let's get it wired up. So, now I've lost my notepaper. Yeah, the PEI is definitely better. My Ender 3 has got PEI sheet on it. Um, I think my GTEC has as well, actually. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But the Ender 3, the original one I've got, has got a um, PEI, magnetic PEI bead on it. So you can just take it off and flex it and pop it off. Works quite nicely. Okay, so notes. He has to go here, you can see what I'm talking about. So I also need to do the bottom ones first, I think, or should I do the middle one? Middle one's actually at the bottom. The dot is opposing the center dot, so it's actually interesting. Okay. If that changes my plan slightly. Let me just think about how I'm gonna do this. I wanna try and keep something similar. Alright, let me just renote this so I know how I'm going to do it. So that one is gonna be black. I'm going to have them the same kind of layouts, not necessarily the same pin numbering. So, right. go this way. Yes, I've got to have handwriting. I always have had. Not changing it now. So I might do the awkward side first, which is over here. So that's going to be the yellow, is probably going to be the hardest one to get to. I need a holder. You know why? Still has a sleeve on. Ok. 
keeps on freaking moving. <laughs> this isn't going to be funny at all. The stand is not heavy enough. Let's just try and pop it in place with this. I think that'll work. Next one. Bring it over the top. So what I'll do is I'll do the top ones and I'll flip it over to the other side. I think it should be okay from then. Sleeves on again, so fine. So, I'm black to the middle one there, and which is the one which keeps on having the things fall off. And untangle these a little bit. Screen one off. Oh, oh, come on, this is good. And the camera turned off. Beautiful. Yeah. Here's the subject, in case you're interested in what this looks like. Okay. Let's put it back together. Put this back on. Before I can bolt it back on. Chat, chat first. <sighs> yeah, what I do with the PI sheets is I actually um, just go and wash them. 
because the um, the Pritt stick kind of glue that glue stick it is water soluble so you just go and wash it and it comes off so um, also if you're trying to, just trying to put a really thin film with that glue across because you want a nice surface finish also I found if you get a wet tissue and you just rub the bed with that with the with the glue on there and just smooth it all out and you get a really nice thin film with, with adhesive and that gives you a much nicer surface finish and obviously when you printed it then you go and wash the part as well and get that glue residue off that's what I found anyway Which one of these do I want? I want that one there. Do I get started? Okay. Sure it's where it needs to be. Make sure for a tighter. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, yeah, so I had a lot of fun doing that uh, project the past few days with those displays. That was quite interesting. It's a nice challenge. And the result is pretty good, so I'm really happy with that particular project. That worked out very nicely. Interesting, this is slotted. Not quite sure why that matters. See we go. It's tied up like this. So where it naturally sits to see if it lines up the hole in the front. Okay. There we go, that lines up perfectly as well, that's good. Okay. Nice, that's actually better than I expected it would be. Cool, that was a good idea Ian, making me do it properly. She always do it properly, you see cutting corners.
Yep, so I'm still looking good. Not rubbing. Excellent. So that's only half the project, the other half is to actually make the new connector. Because obviously I've got to do a new cable for it yet. So fitting you right. Let's do the bottom casing next. shame about this thing here, got these little clips which all break, they never last. Little plastic plugs, there's one there, the other three are all broken. I found all the bits floating around in it before when I pulled it apart originally. feet on. It's always fun trying to figure out where his feet go. I'll probably remember from last time there. I think it was like it. Make sure it's not binding up to the front. Of course, you're going to I shouldn't be putting it back together until I finish testing it. Well, there's not really much to go wrong with that, is there? But you're not wrong. Add to the right screw, or is that something else? I don't think that's the right screw. There's other screws in this tab as well. I think this is something else. I'll go the wrong one. I think I need this one. Yeah, that's good. So 
So I was actually very tempted to do binding posts on this thing for, for ease of use, I suppose, you know. Because you know, everyone's got banana plugs. Everyone's got them. And it would just would have made the process a bit easier as far as future usage. But that's quite a complicated update. As um, Ian's done, he did the binding posts on his unit. So if you want to see how to do this with the binding posts, go and check out Ian's. But, um, and that's what I was very tempted to do. I do have the binding posts here. I did actually buy posts thinking that's what I was going to do. But then I found these connectors instead. And I thought, hey, those are pretty good. I was basically trying to find the right connector. Actually, I shouldn't time that yet. The other one's not quite lined up. And um, because I managed to find something, I didn't end up doing the binding post route. Bought me a new coffee, which is nice. Okay, um, let's put these back on. Let's tempt fight, shall we? I mean, binding post is definitely a way to go with these if you want to have something which is a bit more user friendly, I suppose. But if you want to try and keep it kind of original, then um, either get the right cables and spend a small fortune, or look at these alternative connectors, which are ones I found. So I might actually try and find the link I had for these and put them back into um, in the video description. They would have been in the mailbag video when I got them, so I have to try and find them. A really good price and really good quality. So I think the hardest bit's going to be doing. Oh, cam's gone off again. I think the hardest bit's going to be doing the actual cable connections. So, here's what it is. I didn't push that down. I screwed that side up. I might have misaligned that side. Let me double check this. Yeah, they'd have misaligned it. Make sure it's pushed in. That's better. Okay. Oh, I'll see anything that looks alright. Looks fine, doesn't it? I've got those dimensions basically right, apart from the inner ball, which is slightly off. Maybe we'll tweak it in the model, because then I could share the model and um, put on my um, open source uh, Tinkercad Thingiverse page. Thingiverse is what I'm looking for. So if I stick it on Thingiverse, then um, other people could use it. Maybe stick a link for these as well. May help someone out. Check the chat. Andre, how's it going? Mm. Yeah, the glass bed should be flat. That's from my original Ender 3 is that the glass bed is not flat, it is warped. But that's why I put a, um, a 3D touch sensor on there with a Big Tree Tech my logic board on it.
I could print the little clips at the bottom, but I'm not really going to bother about it because it doesn't really matter. It's just holding cables down. Well, I don't know. Does the 1000 volts still apply? Exactly. I mean, that's its specs, right? That's its rated specs. Being a smaller connector, is that still valid? I don't know. Like I said, I did test it at 1000 volts, put it on my um, installation resistance tester, and I was showing no leakage showing up on that, so it's probably okay. Yeah, don't let the PPMs fall out. Yeah, being upside down, indeed. Okay. Um, let's put the top cover on, finish putting it together. And then we'll do a cable for it and try it out. Finished soldering on, got to make the cable. So I was going to say, I finished with the soldering on, I was going to turn it off, but no. I'm not finished with it. Get it. This case has got a very slight bend on the corners here. It's going to be hard to align it and get it in there. So I push it says meter originally because it was stated as being a seven and a half digit meter, but kind of is only in certain voltage readings. So yeah, it's not really seven and a half digits. It's more like six and a half. The funny thing is I put these seals in here like this. Well, that's not the where the casing comes apart, it comes apart here. So the seals are completely meaningless. I found that quite funny. Alright, let's move this to one side. Uh, I've got to get this thing apart. So it's cables, I don't know, a metre so long, something like that. Must be about a metre long, should be long enough. Alright, um, yeah. <laughs> That goes on the very front. I'll, I'll drop this little bit, these bits out without checking which way it goes first, because that was a bit silly. So it goes over that bit. If we're getting the right order, I just won't go together. At least it goes over the cable. These bits, which will go there, I think. Oh, how did it go? I should pay more attention to that, shouldn't I? I think that one goes in there. Then we have that's a sleeve which goes over this piece. <laughs> that goes inside 
there like that, does it? There's a spacer, yes. That's a spacer. Let's go behind that. Okay, right. That's the last piece to put on. Followed by that piece. Probably fit them on the other end actually, it might be easier. Mm. Right. Slide it over there. That's tapered. Why is that tapered? And it doesn't really want to go over the insulation. Just slide these on from the other end once I'm done. Let them go over it. Yes. There's only this collar here which seems a bit tight. Huh? What's that collar doing? It's also chamfered slightly. So it chamfers for that bit. So the cable grab a gland on that end, which is fine. And that sits in there, so it's like keyed. Who would have thought putting a connector together would be so complicated? <laughs> right, and that's the very last bit to go on because it just slides into that barrel. Right. The main thing I'm worried about is this collar here won't go over the insulation. The rest of it's fine. Maybe that's intentional. Maybe it's intentionally smaller for some reason. Anyway, let's sort this out. There's an awful lot of strands in here. Lots of shielding. Probably too much really, to be honest. Hmm. I think I'm gonna make that look nice. Might have to do on a separate wire, bunch of shorten together, and tack a short little wire onto it to run down to the connector. I always got these little strands that I try and cram into that small space, and that's not going to work. Or should I not do this on a live stream? Because me doing a wiring per connector is probably not that exciting, is it? Or do you just want to see me get it wrong? That's also possible. A lot of shielding on this thing. Yeah, here we go. Yellow, check. Red, check. Blue, check. Black will be the shield, so green will become white. That sounds like a plan. Or shall I look at the standard cable wiring car scheme for these things in case there's similarities in the colours? 
I think there is, I don't know. Where's my cable? This is my original one. No white. So we've got. Yeah, okay. So I might need to consider the wire colours versus the outputs from this lead versus the pinout of the meter. So I might actually go and look at the meter pinouts and actually transfer this to wire colours so I know what wire colours each of these are versus the function and make sure that what we get on the end of the lead matches. I don't feel like doing this on a live stream. <laughs> It's going to take ages. Not that exciting. No, it's not that exciting, is it, Fred? Maybe I'll leave it. All right, let's catch up with the chat. See what Ben's missing. Uh. Finish your first project, Andre. Took you a month. Okay, Dave, bye. You're probably gone, long gone by now. Hey, Willem, didn't know you there. Didn't know you should either. What did I talk? Oh, I think I did say that to you, didn't I? Yeah. I only built a soldering station and did a 245 tips, which is what's on my soldering iron here, this Jabe clone thing. I've got a FX951 clone, which is one of the first, I suppose it's the first station I've got since my original one, which I've had for 20 odd years. Um, yeah, it's the first acquisition I got from sponsorships, I think. And that had some issues. Like, there's a clone one, well, it wasn't a real Heiko, it was a fake, a fake I'll call it. <laughs> and um, it was okay. But I didn't like the interface. I didn't like the way if you want to change temperatures, you've got to take this little card in there and that's like, drive me nuts. Um, and it wasn't really much better than my original iron. Then I picked up. The KSGR, KSGR. Am I dropping lots of frames again? I am. Just drop some more speed. Um, and that works really well. And then I've recently picked up the Jabe Iron, which is the best out of the lot. So that was the fake FX951, followed by the KSGR, followed by the Jabe. That's my sequence of um, quality, I suppose. Shows when it's done, I put a thousand volts through it. Yeah, no problem. Could be a short, unintentional short. <laughs> You know, short video, not a short circuit. Yeah. yeah, the clone one. I mean, my one still works. I've just got to put it away in the cupboard because like, it didn't it didn't perform as well as I wanted. You know, it's okay. I did use it for a little while, but I didn't like using the face. That's the main thing which put me off it. So that ended up getting put away. I, still, I should just sell it actually. It's just sitting there. I'm probably never going to use it again. I've got so many soldering ones now. I don't really need it. I should just flick it off. Sure, doesn't get 20 bucks for it or something. Set to someone. And it works okay. But um, it just it's not a great unit, I don't think. I just don't like the design. So, I should have said it, get my 
maybe give it away even to a newbie, I don't know. Do something with it. So I'll drop my bitrate down right now to 1900. And YouTube's still complaining about not receiving enough data. I'm still dropping a few frames here or there. So if it buffers a bit and stuff like that, yeah, sorry. But my internet connection is also a bit crap. So yeah, I won't bother doing the cable now. I'll do, I'll do it another time. It's not going to be very exciting. But at least I have the means to do it. Um, but yeah, what I have to do is, like I said, you saw me doing twisting the braid together. So what I'll do is I'll solder that together as a lump, then I run a little tiny little wire down from that braid down to the connector to do that final connection. That way it keeps it all nice and tidy by the actual connector. Should be easy enough. Yeah, all right. Um, It's only past 10, or 20 to 11 even. FR810, I don't know that one. I've never tried it. I don't have one here. I guess that's a Heiko, is it? Heiko FR810? Let me go and look at that. Ten B. Oh, it's a hot air station. Okay. Well, I'm using the quick eight six one. Um, there are clones of the eight six one. You have to be a bit careful about those. There are some very slight differences. I bought mine from a local distributor, so it was um, it's a genuine one. It's not a knockoff. And it's been really good. I've no problems with it at all. It works fine. I've had that for maybe two years now, actually. Maybe two years I've had that. Before that, I was using a Yeehaw, or whatever the hell you call it. Um, 851, is it? Um... I can't what it's called now. It's a multi it's a multi unit station. It's uh, soldering iron and hot air. I can't remember the model number now. No, it's not A51, it's something else. Yeah, but that was rubbish. The soldering iron on that thing was rubbish. So I actually had the hot air station as a hot air station, it didn't have a soldering soldering iron part used on that one. I used sip it on. So um, that was no good. Anyway. Um well the quick A61 is I've been happy with mine. I think the price is better than some of the other high end stations, so they're okay, but I don't think they're the cheapest ones around. I think there's other stuff which is cheaper, but I think in this regard you do kind of get what you pay for. There are knockoff eight five ones. Um, what's eight 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 five one eight six one DW? Quick eight six one DW. Is that right? Yes, it is. So you have to be a little bit careful about which ones you get. The 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 front panel looks a bit different. The font's different. That's all the stuff from the original one. So. Um, I know the clones are generally considered okay, but I've heard about things with the pumps blowing on them and stuff like that, so they, the air pumps fail. And things like that, um, not being as good, but the original one, which I've got, is fine. Um, so I'd, I'd recommend it, I mean it's been working fine for me, and I've got to do tips for it, you can get the tips for it easy, buy them easy. 
um, different nozzles. So I'm happy with mine. I haven't felt the need to try and replace it or trying to find something different. So it's obviously adequate. I've done a lot of general stuff. I've also done MacBook repairs with that as well. Do MacBooks and stuff like that with it, which requires quite a large amount of heat output. Whereas my previous hot air station, was it Yeehaw? Oh, God. That's not bug me. What is that thing called? Um, I need to find this out. I want to find it. Once I find it, I can tell you what it is. I've still got it put in a cupboard. Um, yeah, I can't see. This one's similar. A six two is similar. This is going to bug me until I find it. Yeah, put up me for a minute. Whilst I try and find this damn thing. It's an older model, so it's probably discontinued now, so it's probably won't find exactly the same one. Yeah, I, I, I'm probably wasting one's time trying to find it, to be honest. I actually forgot what the point was I was trying to make. That doesn't help either. Now I can't find it. So, um, that was, yeah, that's what hot air output from that was not that good. It was a bit weak. Let's try and find one that's closest to it. I should do that. Where do I see it? Hold on. I just want to show you this thing, which is close, but not necessarily right. She was grabbed it before when I was looking at it. Hold on. Trying to load it now. Big pictures or small ones? What sort of small pictures? That's really helpful. But the hot air output from that was not very good, that's what I'm trying to get to. So it was quite weak, I mean it worked, but it was not up to the job of doing anything which has got a very big thermal mass. Um, it just couldn't do it. Try another picture so I can show you. Here we go. This is the best thing I can find for now. This is similar. It's not exactly the right one. This thing here. It's not exactly the same. It's different to this, but similar kind of look. All right, but the high output from that was no good. Same iron tip, so soldering iron handle stuff. That is not very good either. So I wouldn't recommend it. At least the one I had was like that, um, or similar to that kind of format at least. It wasn't very good. So um, when I went from that to the quick, it was a huge difference. M big, very big difference between the two. STG, yeah, Steve's been doing a lot of video reviews. Um, yeah, he's been doing a lot of stuff. It's really going to bug me, this bloody soldering on station. I should sell that one too, actually. I should get rid of it. These things I'm never going to use again, I should get rid of them. Um... Yeah. Quick eight five seven DW. I haven't seen the eight five seven. I think. Quick eight five seven. 
quick 857DW. Oh, okay, so it's a standalone unit. PC available from Banggood. Use my links down below. <laughs> you just use my link to go to Banggood. It, it uh, allocates it to me as a reference. So this thing here. I mean, it looks basic, but it looks like it's all you need. You can put the hole on both sides. It's got screws this side as well, so you can put the hole on either side. I'm not too sure about, well, I don't have any awareness of the performance of these things. I don't know how good these are, but you reckon that's all right, so. Um, I mean, it's quick. I mean, quick has been fine for me, the A61, so if I do the. Um, do this. But there are clients, you have to be a little bit careful. It's not even on here. looking for that. Got the KSGR. Here we go. So massive price ranges. Let's open up a couple. Let's do the most expensive one and the cheapest one. And we'll have a close look. Oh, and you can't see the screen I'm bloody showing you because I'm an idiot. <laughs> The best A63 is very similar to the Quick A61, but I don't think the quality is quite as good. I think it's okay, but I think there's a difference in it. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I could be wrong. You can see my internet's absolutely flying through. <laughs> uh, right, so that's the knock off one potentially display looks different print looks different it's got the quick name taken off it interestingly and this is what looks to be the real one i'm comparing it with mine it looks identical so this picture is a real one have a close look at that and i'll go to this other one which is cheaper looks very similar but I don't know well I've taken the quick off the name there I don't know that looks really similar actually it might be exactly the same just without the word quick on it maybe it's a factory second or something who knows does this one show the displays doesn't does it no it's a rear view no reviews on this one. Got a completely inappropriate soldering on picture. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. But prices aren't cheap on these. Like this is five hundred dollars New Zealand. We've got this one here which is half that price. Which makes me extremely suspicious. It's a rubbish picture. Anyway. Yeah. I'd be very skeptical about this one. I wouldn't be getting this one, I think. The price just looks too good to be true. Um, but it depends on what your budget's like. I mean, there's lots of other ones out there. suspicious about that why would they photoshop that off that's interesting it looks real apart from the name being taken off it there you go this is the name on there I left it on that one that doesn't say quick that says something else Interesting. Can't see what it says though. 
Maybe that's why I photoshopped it off, because it doesn't say quick, it says something else. Can't see what the name says. It's definitely not quick. Curious, that's probably why it's cheaper. So I wouldn't be getting that one, because that's probably a knockoff. And they've taken the name off it to make it look like a quick, when it's actually not. Or it could be a rebadged quick, who knows. Maybe someone is paying for the name. Anyway. Um, someone's already done a comparison video on the fake ones. Who was that? Someone has actually done one. I saw it about a year ago. Yeah, but you can see that the actual fonts and stuff on the front, on the printing on the front is different. The display looks slightly different. Um, but the fonts are the main giveaway. They're not the same fonts. They're slightly different. The layout's very slightly different. You can see it's not quite the same. Although, although mine's a general one. A uh, general one. A original, genuine one. It wasn't without its problems. So when I first got it, the power switch was broken, but I think it might have had a hit on the front or something, I'm not sure, but the power switch was faulty on it. I had to replace the switch. Um, not a big deal, it was easily done. I didn't have to take it apart to do that, I just popped it out the front and swapped it out for a new one, because I had suitable ones, so it wasn't a big deal. But um, it was faulty, I was flicking the switch and it wasn't flicking to what properly, it was um, not toggling over the mechanism inside. It's just a faulty switch. But I think it may have had a hit on the front or something, maybe, at some point. There's no damage on the front panel. But that's usually what causes those things to fail, so... Who knows? Or it could have been badly made. But, um... I had a spare, so... I've got a bag of them, that type, because I've seen using them for a lot of things, so... Um... I'll have swapped it out for a new one. Wasn't a big deal. So, could I do a comparison video on a fake one? Let's see. Could I get a fake one? I could ask Banggood to send me one. That cheap one, that really cheap one. Now I've closed it. Let me um, go back to the. One that says A61DW doesn't call itself a quick. Actually, let's notice that. In the title, I just went back to the history, you know. It doesn't say quick. It just says A61DW. Once a page loads, I'll add it to my favourites. And I will get that one. I'll get it. I'll try to anyway if Banggood will send it to me. Um, Price-wise, it's within the budget for things I can get. So it's possible. So yeah, that's the one. So let's add that to favourites. And I will try and get one. The next thing I do. Uh, I've, got, I've got something coming. What's coming? Oh yes, that's right. I've got yeah, I've got a review item on its way at the moment from Banggood. It's a little bit different. It's a bit of a marginal thing from what I normally do, but it may be interesting to people. So I thought that's why I'd get it anyway. It's something I try and need for myself. It's a project I'm working at the moment. I actually need this for me. So. That's the main reason I've got it, but I'm thinking, well, it'd probably be interesting to some people as well, so it should be a reasonable review video. So once I've done that one, I'll request one of these, and I'll see if I can get one. These not quick A61DW. You may find it is a quick and it's a factory second. Who knows? Oh, it's, you know, falling off the back of a truck or something. <laughs> Rebadged or... It could be just be a knockoff. I mean, what you see in a picture may not be true anyway. What you actually get physically may be slightly different. You know? It's only a picture after all. So, yeah, I'll request that. I'll get one of those. And I'll see how that turns out. Um, the risk is, of course, if I get one of these and I do a review, people may buy them because of the price point, And it may not last. It may be good initially. 
you may find it doesn't have good longevity. Um, you know, especially if it's only superficial changes between this and the one I've actually got, my genuine one. But as I've got a genuine one, I can actually do side-by-side -side comparisons and things too, so it'd be quite good, I think. So, yeah, I've added a whole watch list anyway. Or, well, wish list. So, we'll see if I can get one. Ah, oh, you've got the fake one there. You found it, Fred. Cool. Everyone can see that link. That's alright. So, if I wants to have a look at that link later on. So, that's the thing with the... As you mentioned about the Chinese channels turn to cheap Chinese products review channels. To a point, yes. I mean, there's a there's a fine line between getting stuff for free because it's handy and it's just good enough to do the job, and being able to splash out and get some quality products, some high quality stuff. Right? It's like, um, I mean, these things I get from Banggood, obviously. They're variable. Some things are, are okay. Some are really good. Some not so much. And I'll try and cover that in reviews, saying you know the points I do or don't like about them, or that sort of stuff, or if they feel cheap or not, that kind of thing. Um, but it's a bit hard because also you need to try and represent the product correctly. So if it's not something I'd recommend people buy, I would try to convey that in the video in a way which doesn't put Banggood off at the same time, you know, because I have to try and make sure that I get future review things, because if I get a review item and people don't even follow the link to go and have a look at it, because I track the links, not necessarily purchases, but also, link, you know, they track the links usage. So if I see people going to have a look at it at least, then it shows that there's a response to the review items, and the more response I get, the better the pricing availability I get, so I can get a more expensive item to review in future. Which means you get better quality and that kind of thing. So, yeah, you, other things you think, okay, it's a Chinese product. Is it good? Maybe. Is it good? Mm, maybe not. Um, yeah, you have to sort of weigh it up yourself and try and judge it. But I do try and convey that in the videos. But um, generally, it's a case of if I think it's a good product, I'll say it's a good product. If it's not so good, I probably won't say it's a good product because I'll just say it's okay or it seems to do a job or something like that, you know. Um, yeah. Hentec. Uh, no. Don't get Hentec. The best budget scope outside of Siglant that I'd recommend is actually the Must Tool. So I did have a video on that. I did a, I did a Hentec must haul and coming out of brand of three three really budget scopes I did reviews on the must haul was by far the better one Johnny you didn't miss anything I've been doing absolutely nothing I haven't done any work didn't turn the soldering iron on actually I'll turn it off you missed everything Johnny everything <laughs> um, so what's the past drum mate? Oh, I've forgotten now. Oh yes, the scopes. So the ones I've did, look at my review videos, right? I did three reviews on those, right? Must tool, hand tech, and what the hell was the last one? I think the hand tech came second. It wasn't that bad, but it was not much worse. No, I think, yeah, the must tool was the better one of the three, which I tried. It had a better screen, better responsiveness, better bandwidth. Um, I just liked the, the must tool a lot better. So I actually had all three scopes obviously reviewed. And I, when I get the must tool, I sold the other ones. Um, and I kept the must tool as my other scope. I've now sold that one as well because I don't need it anymore because I've got so many scopes here. I don't need it anymore, so I've been just selling that one as well. Um, but the must tool was one I held on to the longest. Um, a den star. Can I request an original JVC? Not likely to happen. Um, they're somewhat more expensive. The, this isn't exactly a JVC. It's it's very JVC like. 
and um, the design is not exactly the same. I don't know if it's a, maybe it's a version which is identical to this, I don't know. But the ones I've seen for the JBC irons, they're not exactly the same. They're the same or very similar form factor, but they've got like an adjustment knob and tip the iron over and stuff like that, and some differences there which are not present on this casing. There are some big differences there, but they on the surface they appear the same, but they're not the same. Um, uh, and on star, yes. I'm going to say and and end in star. Head in star is not quite right. It's end on star is the microscope, which if I change cameras. Is sitting just there. I leave that I'm sitting on the side of the desk because it's really handy. Ooh, look, I can see my friction. Um, I leave that sitting on the side of the desk there because now if I need to quickly look at something, I can just flick it on because it's always powered up. I just push the, the power button on the top to turn it on and I can quickly look at something underneath it. It's really handy. Unity, that's the other one. Unity, yes. Um, I'm pretty sure Unity was the worst one. Could have been a handtick. One of those was the worst one. I can't remember which one it was, but the must tool was the best. Um, but those are all. Those are really like the really budget ones. I can't remember the model numbers now, but I've got the reviews anyway. Go look at the review videos, and hopefully you'll come through and knows if you're if you're thinking about that one. Um, and also, if you do buy one, use my links in the description for the video, and. Um, Helps me a little bit because I get commissions. Um, but if your budget can stretch a bit further than those kinds of scopes, try and stretch out to the the lowest signal you can get. Right, even if you get the budget signal, the, the lowest signal you can get is still a lot better than those. Um, that I got the one was eleven oh four XU is it or eleven oh two XU? I can't remember what it is now. Must be 1104XU. That has a lot of features missing of it compared to some of the other ones. So it's a bit cheaper. It's about $100 cheaper, I think. And I guess it's quite close to those other scopes. But it's got things like decoding in it and things like that. It's all built in. But um, it does have a few things removed from it compared to the standard XE, for example. If you go to another um, 1102XE would be the cheapest one, I think apart from the XU. The XU is an education version. Is it EU? I think it's XU. I can't remember that. I think it's XU. I have to wonder it now. Anyway, it's got a U in it. <laughs> if you should spend my money this year. Yeah, good on you. Good on you. The bank of links to a forbidden page. Oh, yeah, okay. That's um, there's an issue with links. Some of the links they they changed their system a little bit, so the links I had set up wouldn't redirect correctly. It's their redirect links which is the problem. Um, it's the HTTP HTTPS bit at the end, the beginning. If you, if you go to the URL of that link, cut the HTTP part off it. And then just submit that, and it will probably come up. Which particular link are you referring to? Is it in this video, in the live stream, or is it in the other ones? I might have to look at fixing it. There's some weird thing with the redirects and references. Something, it's there in. Works fine for you? Okay. I know some of them have been failing. Um, and I've had to go through and fix some. Yeah. Because um, I was using their link. So I've got their short link, which is referenced by my short links. So my short link is converted to their short link, which then goes to the web address. And it's their, web, it's their short link to the web address, which is the bit that's breaking. So I ended up bypassing their short links and putting my own address in, directly bypassing their short link. Um, in most cases I fix it, but sometimes they were still wrong, so they didn't weren't using short links, they're using a direct link. And it wasn't 
um, referencing correctly. It's definitely something to do with HTTP, HTTPS. If you take that bit off, it will usually work. Okay, Curry, thanks for dropping by. Just let us catch you later. Enjoy your log. You know, I can't say. It. Enjoy your yard work. So it's in the affiliate links of like all my videos or just like this one or generally I just need to know which one it is because if it's just in this one it could be this is an old link in this one it's possible. Let me pull the video info up or well, the live stream info because it's just when I do a live stream I just replicate the stream. So I just copy those settings and make another one. Let me go and check this and I shall um, sort this out. Hold on a second. I need to. So I'll grab the link from this stream, which is directing to HTTPS. Did we try it? It's loading. Denied. Okay. So yes, that was denied. If I take the HTTPS off. In dub, dub. That's loading. Okay. I need to fix that link. Interesting, it does go to a HTTPS link. It just doesn't like the HTTPS redirection. So if I just do HTTP instead of HTTPS. That works fine. So it's something to do with the secure server, the SSL side. So if I don't do HTTPS links to Banggood, it should be okay. Remember, I looked in just a couple of months ago because it's playing quite badly then. I'd better fix that. Um, actually, I'm going to do that right now while I'm thinking about it. I was going to forget. All I've got to do is find those Banggood links and change them to HTTP. There's a few of them, I think, actually. Um, where's my link? Yeah. So if you take the HTTPS off or change to HTTP instead of HTTPS, it will work. Well, thanks for letting me know about that. I thought I'd resolve that problem. Turns out I've missed it somewhere. So that particular link is referenced as 5D46AE. Oh. 5D46AE. Here it is. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of banger links of HTTP, yes or no? This is going to take a lot of work to fix. I could have switched to turn HTTPS off. Change everything. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll look at this later on. I'll try not to forget. But yes, I have to fix that. Your server reboots every time I stream. Really? Again? Link looks okay there. Maybe to the browser as well. Maybe it's a browser where it's handling the redirection from the HTTPS. Maybe it's something to do with why I'm redirecting. It could be something to do with it as well. Yeah, using Firefox works fine. So Christian using Chrome are you? So I'm getting the error in Safari. Haven't tried in Chrome. 
But I think when I tried this before, when I was aware of this particular issue, which I thought I'd solved, um, it was breaking in Chrome as well. So. <coughs> Only Chrome and Edge. Maybe it's yeah, it's probably some kind of security thing then. Maybe it's the way I'm redirecting. Maybe I'm not doing it elegantly enough. Because I'm telling it to basically do a reload of the page. At a different address. Um, maybe that's the issue. But I'm doing the redirects. Maybe the URL itself is okay, but it's not like in the redirect to it. Um, if I copy and paste the URL straight into the window without the redirect link, so exactly the same address, but not going through the redirect. That loaded. Okay. So I think it's time to do the way I'm redirecting those links from the short link system. Just not liking that. It seems it's a security issue, it would seem. Which is why if I do HTTP, not HTTPS, it's probably a bit less touchy about that. Yeah, I have to look at that and figure out what's going on. It used to work fine. I guess something changed. Edge, oh, I hated it. I tried Edge, it's like, oh. Mm. No, it's just like a toy, really. It's all gimmicky, and it's like, lots of bloatware on it. It's like, meh. Nah. Didn't like it. That was my, my wife's machine. You know, when you first got Windows 10, that thing. Well, I got that computer Windows 10, the Edge was like, meh, delete that. <laughs> Internet Explorer was better, that's saying something. Anyway, I, I just don't like Windows machines. I just don't think Microsoft make very good software in lots of ways. They put too many gimmicks in, you know, so overcomplicated. You know, they, they bloat it out with gimmicks and, and things which look flash rather than being stable and reliable. I think anyway, I don't know. The things that I've noticed which I don't like have stood out in that way to me at least. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because I'm kind of hungry and I did what I wanted to achieve today. Get a solder from done. Well, apart from the cable. I'll have to do the cable later. Um, that would be a low priority. I need to fix this redirect link thing first. And um, I've got to edit a video for Tim. Mm, 10 hours time, 12 hours time. Yeah. So much, so much junk in there, anyway. So yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. So thanks for dropping by. Give us a like before you leave. And if you're watching this later on, you're not subscribed, then click on subscribe. You know what happens to stumble across the stream later on. And um, thanks for dropping by. I don't know if I'll be doing a stream next week or not. I'll have to see if I've got a project to work on. I'm running out of projects to work on. I haven't been buying much test gear recently. Um, I've had some other expenses, so I've been spending money on those. Um, bought some bits and pieces. I've been buying things, but... Um, so, we'll have to see how we go. Enjoy my cable connecting. Yes, indeed.